before I move forward, I'm just gonna, you know, create a cluster on SIBO because, uh, you know, there are some steps that QSphere takes that takes a, a little bit of time. Um, so I can just add something like QSphere demo, demo two, because I already ran one previously. Default, I'm gonna go to this one. I already have one installed over here, one second. I don't think we have to do that one. Let me just see. No, I don't think I have it here. One second. Even it is, sorry. Yeah, QSphere, SIBO. And I'll show you how you can make it on your own as well. So what you have to do, you have to go to Kubernetes and you can create a new cluster. When you create a new cluster, you can give it some name. You can say my cluster, firewall and stuff. We'll talk more about it later on. You can select your own tier like this, and then you can go to management and you can find QSphere over here. That's all you need to do. And you will be landed on a page, on a page like this. Cool. So you can find it under, under management. It's in the Kubernetes marketplace. QSphere is available over here. All right, so that's what you know, we'll talk about today. But before moving forward, let me explain a little bit more about like QSphere and why it's, you know, what, what, what we're doing over here. So as you can see you know, on the website, it's mentioned that it's a distributed open, uh, distributed operating system for cloud native application management. And it uses Kubernetes as its kernel. So it provides like a nice little UI that you can use as a plug and play architecture. It also allows third party applications and you know Kubernetes is extremely like powerful, but it's 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 it gets a little bit difficult when folks try to add it like in practice. For example, uh, just like Kubesphere, I've seen like so many folks who are trying to make uh, you know, trying to focus more on the dev part or, or dev part of DevOps. So Kubernetes as complex as it, as it is, uh, platforms like you know like Kubesphere, as you can see over here, it's making easier for folks to onboard to Kubernetes and. Uh, this is where you know the QSphere comes in when we talk about like uh, there are so many different practices and uh, you know it, when it comes to Kubernetes, so it basically makes your life easier when it comes to managing Kubernetes, right? If we talk about some of the features over here, I believe him and you can you know, jump in on it as well. So here you can see um, how it's going to benefit the infra team, the developers, ops team, and end user. Many of you are like developers, so you can see that you can focus more on you know. Uh, the de development part and you know the application part and uh, everything else uh, you know you don't have to deal with like the complicated YAML files if you will so you can you know move ahead uh, a little bit more faster and the ops team as you can see over here and end users as well right um, speaking of the features as you can see uh, out of the box CI CD uh, solutions based with other tools like as you can see Jenkins over here service mesh based on Istio observability and uh, this is the one that we'll be looking into this session as well, which is Kubernetes multi-cluster management. So just via like one, um, just one account, using one account, you'll be having a, um, I'll explain it later on. I don't wanna, uh, you know, jump ahead, but uh, uh, we'll basically look how you can do multi-cluster management in Kubernetes uh, with Kubesphere, which I believe is a really, really cool feature. Edge computing platform and uh, all the rest of the things are available over here as well. Less talking, more doing. So I'll jump on the demo right now, but uh, Feynman, would you like to add something to it? Um, I think it, it is enough. The introduction looks good to me, yeah. Cool, uh, let's get started. So you already have uh, your cluster created over here. There are some minimum requirements. I believe you need uh, two cores of CPU, a little bit like around four gigabytes of memory, and 40 gigabytes of, of volume. And also there are a certain ports that require to be open um, that you can also see on the, I believe in the documentation that it requires some ports for you to be open. So we already talked about that you can go into the marketplace under management, and then you can um, you know work with it. If you haven't worked with the COCLI, that's fine. I'll just download the kube config and show you uh, via kubectl, but I highly, highly recommend you know working with the CLI. Port cube config. Okay. And I can just say Q 
kubectl logs this command that I can run and it's going to show me like the real time of uh, like the logs of the installation. This one should show successful, pretty cool. So this is important because when you run it on your own, it's going to take a little bit of time. It does like a few steps. I think there are four steps that it takes or something. It does a bunch of things on the behind. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it. Like tools like this provide such abstraction. So you don't have to like deal, uh, deal with all sorts of things. Like we talk about, like, I'll show you the UI in just a minute and Femin will then show you like how you can work with like the observability features. So it, it, you, you'll see how easy it is for, you know, uh, even beginners and new folks to get started and how it's definitely going to help like, uh, you know, businesses speed up with Kubernetes who may find it difficult to get started with. So this is a command that you can use um, and it will show you like uh, successful. I can go to the external IP of my, my cluster over here. And this is the one that is correct. And uh, what is the port? 30880. There we go. Okay. I forgot my password. What was the password that I said? <laughs> I think I did not change it. So I believe it's the default one only. I hope so. So there's a default password, which is this. I think this should work. Yeah, highly recommend yeah. you all to change it. <laughs> this is just the default one, but um, you can definitely change it. Um, as, as you can see, it's uh, on port 30880. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. So when you create your own Kubernetes cluster, please note that uh, these ports you know, should be open. You can manage it under firewall. I have put it on default, like all open, but you can go to firewalls and you can make sure that these ports, if you're using a firewall that, you know, um, these are open, right? There are a few ports, you can find it in the documentation. Um, but I believe that's it. So this is basically like the, the UI over here. Um, if I go to the overall view, I can go over here. This is cluster management, access control, and platform settings. Access control has a bunch of features, but I'm going to work on cluster management. And uh, this is something that I already have set up. And this is the example for multi-cluster management. So it's pretty, pretty simple. So let's talk a little bit more about like multi-cluster, uh, managing multiple clusters on, on QSphere. Um, so if you're, if you're working with Kubernetes and, uh, you know, you may have to deal with, uh, multiple clusters you know, as a day-to-day -day routine. So you may have like several clusters that are hosted on like CO, for example, or some other cloud providers, whatever, whatever you prefer. And some may be running in like your local data, local data centers or something like that. So it can be really, you know, uh, time consuming to you know, manage these, these, all these clusters that are running at all these places one by one. So the idea what Kubesphere is going to follow is that if you have multiple clusters in this example, two, for example, um, then one of these clusters is uh, going to act as a host cluster, and then you can add multiple member clusters. So host cluster is basically going to manage all the other member clusters. I believe that's how it works. Uh, Femin, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. And I, I think you can only have one host cluster that can manage multiple member clusters. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. So this is basically going to improve efficiency in uh, multi-cloud and multi-cluster management. I believe it uses Kubesphere um, Federation. Uh, just and there are like two ways by which you can do it. Uh, let me just show you in a second. Multi-cluster management. Cool. Bring multi cluster management. So yeah, so this is uh, you know, this is how it happens. And uh, there was basically one more I think overview. Yeah. I think this is it. Gives you a federation. There you go. So this is how it works. As I mentioned previously, um, this is your host cluster, and then there's a mom, there's like n number of member clusters that you want to that you want to have. Um, but how does it like actually work? few pointers, you need to have Kubesphere installed on every cluster, which is you can, something can do relatively simply um, using the marketplace, or you can, you know, do it by your own as well using the CLI, it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, as well for that. And there are two ways by which you can do it. There's a direct connection that you can use or the agent connection. I'll show you how to use, uh, how to set up, uh, set it up with, uh, with a direct connection. Um, cool. Let's move forward. Um, as you can see over here, I think I can go into my host. 
and I can go to CRD. And what was it? Cluster configuration. Is that correct? Yes. This one. So you can go over here. There will be a YAML file over here, KS installer. I can edit it. And here, basically, this is the cluster configuration for this cluster, right? I have to tell uh, QSphere that this cluster is my host cluster, the host cluster, the image that I showed previously, this one. So I can say cluster management, where is it? Here you go. So multi-cluster, what is this cluster's role? Well, this is the host cluster. So that is what I have listed over here. Click on OK. And after a while, when you go back to your platform, cluster management, this will be added as host cluster. Pretty straightforward. Cool. Awesome. So now this is going to be added as the host cluster. And same thing, what you can do is you can go to, um, one second, you can go to member cluster and uh, you can go to member cluster, for example, and you're going to log in via the member cluster. So obviously in the account of member cluster, in this case, what is happening is that I have logged in via this. And uh, this is something that I, this is another cluster that I created over here in SIVO, as you can see, um, member. So I can log in over here as well. No problem. It's already available here. Three zero. What was the password? I, I could speak. type it. <laughs> yeah. Let me type it. There you go. This is the one. Same thing I have to do. I have to tell that this one. Okay, what? Um, are you going to log to log into the member cluster? Yeah. Oh, actually, this is this might be a bug in the latest version, so uh, okay, we are going okay. to fix it. We have already fixed it uh, in three dot three, so you can. Uh, I see. I see. Enter into the member cluster from the host ma management console. Yeah. You yeah. Can yeah. No, click into no, it. No. No worries. So it's basically the same thing. If I go over here, right? Yeah, and, the same and thing. I go to CRD. I go to cluster, cluster config. Then I go edit this. Here, basically, I'll be adding this as member cluster, right? And one more thing you have to keep in mind is this JWT secret token that I have received, right? So if I go into yeah. the documentation. So the thing is that this will be basically, if I add it, if I add the role member over here, now Cubesphere knows that this cluster is going to be used as a member cluster. Okay, no problem. But how is it going to identify the host? So you can do that via this thing, this JWT token. Now the thing is, how do we get this token? So you can get it via the, like if you go into the host, here we go in the host, I'll just go kubecon, um, kubectl, this is also a great feature. You can go into kubectl and uh, type commands and stuff over here. And the JWT command is this one. This is it. Just copy this and paste it in the JWT section. And I believe that's, uh, and you're pretty, pretty much good to go. The next thing is adding it. And that's the last step. So you go to platform cluster management, add cluster, include it, give it a cluster name and uh, provider and everything. Uh, I believe I've already added it. So I can just say, can I add it again? I'm, I'm not sure. No, not, not really. <laughs> uh, I'll just show it for like demo purpose. Direct connection. And here you can basically get the cube config of this target cluster. Right, you can group the cube config. Cube config you can get pretty easily via the SIVO dashboard. Um, so member cluster, download the kube config file, copy paste in this particular thing. But there's an important point I'd like to mention about the IP address over here. Member config, 
copy paste believe this particular one right this is an important point so make sure this one is like discoverable by your member member cluster uh, you can add like extra internal ip that is like available to your member uh, sorry i'm saying member host one so this yeah. one should be available by the host one right so please make sure of this since this is like the external one so it will work just fine then you click click on create and that's it uh, you'll be you'll be landed on something like this so now you can manage your member cluster notice that i'm logged in via this so i'm logged in via the host and i'll be able to manage my member as many as i had over here so you don't have to maintain like multiple accounts similarly if i go to host cluster or member cluster since this is already logged into host i'll go into member no problem and here you can find all kinds of you know stuff cpu usage memory usage um cluster nodes as you can see nodes running individually you can go into this right um you, can, you know c sections over here and you can check out some so the pods that are running over here as well um monitoring which you know i'm sure a few men will talk about you can see some nice little dashboards that are available over here um a bunch of bunch of things are available over here um workloads and configurations crds and stuff you already looked into it volumes can be managed monitoring alerting cluster status settings as you can see you know api server monitoring scheduler monitoring all bunch of things are available over here 